Today's guest is Amanda from Swell Entertainment. Not to be confused with Swelling Entertainment, a website Raf told me about last night and Frogan said is haram. Amanda started her YouTube channel when she was 16 years old and finally made it during COVID. Amanda goes to events and reviews them and posts her experiences on YouTube, just like my grandma. And she blew the lid on TanaCon. She's been on the Dr. Phil show. Let's welcome our first guest of the a Raps podcast ever, Amanda. Wallahi. <laughs> Wallahi. Welcome in, babies. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. I feel like I butchered that. No, no that, was that, great. that was good. It was pretty solid. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was like, what the fuck is swelling entertainment? I actually don't know. What, what have you ever that? Googled the word swelling? No. Okay. I have. <laughs> Market research. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's my SEO? Like? Yeah. <laughs> what are people looking up? Yeah. It's kind of like how some people search their names. I just search swell. I search entertainment. I see what comes up. <laughs> So what is it? <laughs> to, to engorge, dude. <laughs> to engorge? Is it vor? Stop giving me no, words. No, 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 no. Vor, vor is like when... Can I explain vor? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Vor is when... So I did... This is funny because I did my senior project on porn. Um, so <laughs> I am the haram of this podcast. Um, <laughs> basically, vor is like when you get, you've been eaten, but you're still alive inside the person. So it's like engorgement, but you're still... The person is actively still alive inside one person. That's vor. Um... Then there's just cannibalism, which is just eating someone. So that's a swelling. Oh. No, swelling is like swelling, like when something's limp and then it's. Not. Oh, like it swells up. Yes. Like erection. Swollen. Oh. Swelling. Swelling. Okay. You know, swelling. <laughs> that's why I said we're too hard for Frogan. Yeah, she's <laughs> trying to process it right now. <laughs> she's like, what's swelling? I'm like, all right, Frog, when a man loves a woman <laughs> or eating, another man. Eating a person and the person still being alive in your body. That's for. That's, uh, that's there, insane. There's a bunch of Sonic Vore. Sonic Vore? Yes. Sonic Vore is very popular. What's in Sonic Vore? It's just Sonic. It's just it looks like Sonic, pregnant Sonic characters. Oh. Or like it's like someone's OC, which is an original character. Like they draw themselves. <laughs> Eating Sonic. I love how Amanda's just like someone's OC original character. <laughs> like, I am an OG fangirl. Yeah, I know all the time. Like, this time I could tell like you were a stan. Yeah. So totally. I mean like I was just, I had a stan account and everything mm -hmm. before I started content creation. So I was gonna ask you like, did you have any stan accounts or like any like bands or YouTubers or anybody in particular? This is where I lose any cool credibility that I have. Um, so I didn't really have any like fangirl accounts for like bands or anything like that i had a role play account mm -hmm. for an original avatar the last airbender character <laughs> of myself Wait, in avatar what, the last what is airbender. Your airbender name or i think i called myself mala golka <laughs> <laughs> oh she was jewish on the <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's a waterbender name. <laughs> Jewish role play sister. <laughs> I was in middle school. It died with it. I, and then also my other, um, <laughs> on my main Instagram account that I still have to this day, because I've had it since middle school. It is gone now. I have deleted the post. I did make an in memoriam post for Wally West from Young Justice when he died in the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, unfortunately, like, a lot of, like, I never really had, like, not unfortunately. I'm not ashamed of being a stan or anything like that. Um, but I definitely, like, a lot of my stan stuff is still on my page. Like, it's funny. My chat was like, oh, yeah, you were in someone's five seconds of summer video. And I was like, what do you mean? And then they had videos of me when I'm, like, barely 18 doing a rant video about the five seconds of summer Rolling Stone cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, so when we, we were doing research, you know, market research on swelling entertainment, I was doing research. I was like, yo, man is real deep in this five seconds of summer. And it reminded me of the time Frogan canceled big time rush. And I was like, bro, it's like you either die a hero, live long enough to see yourself become a stand account villain, dude. I have a confession. Yeah. I used to hate five seconds of summer. That's totally cool. And let me tell you why, because it was like one of those things. I don't know. Like were you on Twitter? in like yeah. 2014 oh yeah i fucking hated how like they try to insert themselves into the pop punk scene mm -hmm. and like all time low like all time low fan was getting like infiltrated by five seconds of summer stands because they were friends with all time low so then yeah. they just started like randomly fucking up their concerts and i'm like 
I don't want to get out of these fucking shows. And now these five seconds of summer stands are camping out because yeah. they wanted to be as close to like proximity of five seconds of summer. I'm trying to include you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to include like, you. Like, I'm sorry I did this to yeah. you. I'm trying to Raph's include like, you. I didn't even listen to music. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was deaf. You think we had music yeah. in the house? We, we, we drove in the car in silence. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, God. but so I hate, I'm like, these, these fake fuck pop punk ass, like, fake pop, pop pop punk whatever but then i ended up meeting them mm-hmm. um because one of my best friends uh loved them and i had connections like a radio station i was like i'm gonna get into the five sauce meet and greet and when i met them ashton was like hi we're the band and whenever <laughs> he said that i actually like it just slipped out i was like what band are you in and he just looked at me what, what band are you in the five <laughs> oh my god you starstruck him have you ever seen the disney channel movie starstruck no. This is the game plan if you ever meet someone famous. It's literally about like a girl whose older sister is like a hardcore fan of this famous actor or musician or whatever. And this girl just accidentally ends up like getting knocked in the head by him outside of a club that he's performing in oh, when I he's sneaking out. Yeah. What? And then it literally she he's like, Well, I can't let paparazzi see you. You're injured. I injured you. So like it ends up being like a 24 hour like rom com movie <laughs> where she's just like, I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are. And he's like, Everyone cares who I am. What do you mean? <laughs> and yeah, it, it's, it sounds it's, like <laughs> kidnapping. <laughs> I hit you in the head. Get in my car. We have twenty four hours to fix this. <laughs> no, it's like it's like every girl that I knew that like was obsessed with a band member. They were like, "This is the blueprint. I'm gonna meet Ashton Irwin. I'm gonna. I don't know I'm him. Make a no, because that's the thing. It's like I so I'm from Orange County. Like I am. So like we're close to LA, and I had friends who their parents would literally let them do anything as long as they had straight A's in school. So like I have friends who's like their hobby was stalking five seconds of summer. <laughs> like if you like the people that you're talking about, mm-hmm. I know those girls. <laughs> <laughs> I know them. I'm going to say a name and it's going to trigger you. Okay. Acacia. <laughs> it doesn't trigger me. I'm, I just I'm know I, I just... she's still in the scene, just in a different form. Now she's just a, a deadbeat mom. Yeah. Allegedly. Originally, <laughs> Well, like there's photos. Like Shots it's kind of being fired. Yeah. <laughs> no, so like she was like very popular in like the O2L scene as well, um, which is like one of the OG YouTube groups as well. And then she um, was like looped in with like I don't think she was actually a groupie, but she was looped in with like the groupie scene of Five Seconds Summer and a bunch of other bands. And because uh, she was a model and all this stuff, and then she uh, got married young, had three children young, and just kind of became like one of the. I don't want to say OG mommy bloggers of like our generation, okay. but like very popular mommy blogger got a divorce and then decided, actually, I'm going to take all of my kids off social media. So you guys can't judge me because you don't know anything about what my kids are up to. It's great. Which originally I was like, fantastic, because I am very much a fan of people keeping their kids offline. Yeah. And then there was a uh, post posted in a local Facebook group for her hometown where she um, apparently left her kids, young children, I think all under the age of five on a blanket and like what? at a park and went to go take some photos, I think for only fans in the woods next to the road, by the way, like the blanket, one was of the kids got on, on the top road. of their van, like somehow. And parents were what like, what did she think the, what the blanket was going to be like a force field? <laughs> like you Essentially. Can't leave. <laughs> and then like they were reported at, like she was reported and then it people were like, Oh yeah, apparently she's like, a f-. these were just people who did not know who she was. They were just like this mom abandoned her children and like took photos <laughs> of the kids and stuff. And it was just wild. So if that's all true, that's horrific. Yeah. The photos, the pictures, it's definitely her in the pictures. But they, oh. they did a whole spread on her too about like how And she um, did a spread in the woods too. So <laughs> <laughs> They did like a whole spread Sex. on her about like how she, like her second daughter has like health issues and yeah. like in multiple of her vlogs like the daughter just seen laying like sprawled out on the floor like she just disregards the daughter. <laughs> it's what? it's it's sad but it's one of those things where it's like I think a lot of parents especially young parents aren't prepared for like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, children. So let me ask you so the, yeah. the the whole thing is that she was a fan like who made like a stand blog? No, so she was one of the OG Tumblr girls. Oh, which is like, which was like a huge thing at she, the time. She was yeah. like the blueprint of Tumblr girlies. Like, yeah. and everybody wanted to look like her. Everybody wanted to be oh. her. Like the OG Pinterest posts were like all photos of her. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, she was snap. like, like basically the IG model of Tumblr. And once she got in with like five seconds of summer, like pictures of her with them, like shit was over on Stan Twitter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget that. Yeah. The yeah. uh um the one thing that like is wild is that uh 
like I remember Tumblr back in the day had so much pull. It was like just like one of the biggest things, and then all of a sudden overnight it just died. You know, to me, it was like an oh insane. Tumblr. I'm still on Tumblr. I, I'll admit to that. I'm still on Tumblr. It is a hellscape, but I am still on Tumblr. Is it? Is it? What is Tumblr? Is it like an Imgur? Like because no, as an Imgur, it's it's a definitely a blog platform. Okay, but it's okay. mainly text and photos and memes. Okay, mm-hmm. there is some video they try to do live stream, which they nuked after within a year, which fantastic. <laughs> I love being right because I said who asked for this, and then sure enough, within a year it was gone. Remember when Reddit did that? The live streaming. Did they do? Re- yeah, did they, they did, did for a little pan. bit. Yeah, that's how like uh, one of our friends got his whole platform was just Reddit live streams. Really? And then you would yeah, you um, would like grow. Mer- no, no, no. Uh, uh, Mer-, Mer did it, and so did Loudmouth. Oh, yeah, a lot oh, of music yeah, streamers yeah, yeah, yeah. would go yeah. live on Reddit. Oh, that's cool. And they'd be streaming yeah. like it, you would be like on t- uh, Twitch with like twenty f- viewers, and then all of a sudden you're on Reddit with like five, six thousand. And Reddit yeah. people are like dedicated. So if you yeah. see someone on Reddit, they will go to your stream. So mm-hmm. one of my buddies was like, I used to get like four or five hundred new people every day to my Twitch stream from Reddit, mm. and it was a leaderboard. So you'd be at like the top of Reddit live streaming. Mm-hmm. It was wild, but it was also really weird because you'd have to like connect it through your phone. It was this thing called RPAN, and it was it was like a it was a COVID thing. It blew up during mm-hmm. COVID, you know. I remember, like, I had a I had a project in college that we had to post everything on Tumblr. We had to make a whole website and make everything through Tumblr. It was really weird for me, That's but tum- Tumblr Tumblr like when I was like starting to get into like content creation or like the social media like aspect of the world, Tumblr was like my in. You know, I had my depression account, I had my sex, sexy sex account, and then I had my normal, just everyday account. As opposed to boring sex account. As opposed to boring sex account. There, sexy there was sex account? there was boring sex account. It was just people looking at deeply into each other's eyes. <laughs> Does that account still exist, or do it get new? I have in the porn no purge? idea where it is. We're finding it. So <laughs> what you're talking, so ahead. what you're talking about with like Tumblr fell off the map. It's because uh, I believe it was um, not Twitter. Who bought it? Um, Yahoo bought it. For oh, like three billion, like an insane amount of money, and immediately we're like, well, we need to. The way we get more advertisers is making it family friendly. So they nuked seventy five percent of the porn on the website, which was seventy five percent of the website. Yeah. Um, <laughs> instead of dealing with the underage stuff that was on the platform, yeah. they were just like, let's get rid of all female presenting nipple. And yes, that's the phrasing they used. Um, female presenting nipple is yes, great. Yes. <laughs> And uh, so then a bunch of people left it because like a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of adult workers were on there as well as a lot of, you know, artists, like a lot of their arts got taken down. And so then they were like, OK, we're going to roll it out slowly and then just never really got back to its former glory type of thing. So I told you this story the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a creator, a YouTuber I loved that I followed on Tumblr. And one time he accidentally reblogged his sex account. <laughs> and <laughs> wait, tell me. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Wait, just believe it. Or is yeah, it- I'll tell you guys too. Like he accidentally revlogged his sex account where he did like d- Dommy Daddy. Oh role my god, play. I, I think I know what you're talking. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> No, I'm thinking of someone else. Oh, that he has oh. one. He used like whenever I was a teenager. Oh, I'm thinking. Bl- block it- this. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, bleep it out. <laughs> but yeah, definitely bleep that one. You out. Hear it, bleep yeah. It. <laughs> um, no, bleep, but bleep it out again when I, when I say it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just so, wanted to say no, it. Put a black box over his face felt, and everything. It felt good. I'm yeah. not lie. No, but this was in like 2012. Uh, I, I, I'm not gonna say this, but like, yeah, it was somebody I used to watch a lot. Um, but whenever that happened, I was just like. Why does everyone have? I, I never got invited to have a sex account. No one ever told me that you, you missed the threshold, buddy. Okay. Okay. I didn't have a sex account on Tumblr. I just had a stand account. Mm. But then, oh, I thought she was gonna say until now. <laughs> yeah, I was like yeah. Rogan. <laughs> no, I didn't even know how to work Tumblr anymore. I like I made a Tumblr account a couple days ago just to be able to access my old archives because mm-hmm. you have to have an account to look at archives. Yeah. And my shit dates back to like 2012. Same. Mm-hmm. So and I was like looking. It was like the 1975 Dan and Phil. Um, like kick the PJ, like all YouTuber shit, Fallout Boy, all time low. I'm gonna be honest. I think it's because I'm old. Because I had a Zenga. A what? Yeah, I had a Zenga. Zenga. The fuck Bless is you. that? You're too young for Zenga. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what, Wait, you know what Zenga is either. No. Oh yeah, tell me. Zenga. I'm 26. Zenga, Zenga was like it was like before MySpace, like mm-hmm. right before MySpace. Zenga came out. I want to say something about MySpace, but I don't. I think it will dox me. But Zanga came out, and Zanga was like a kind of like a Tumblr, like a website, like where it's like a blog, 
but it was kind of like MySpace where you can like post your stories and stuff. And all I remember is when I look back at mine, like I went back and like looked at through the way back machine. It was just a bunch of fucking movie posters that I posted with Arabic music playing with a bunch of punk bands. <laughs> <laughs> My was- Tumblr is just reblogs. Like, I don't even think I ever really post anything on it. I've tried to post some of my YouTube videos, like the OG videos, because they just weren't growing. But, like, other than that, it's, like, just a bunch of, like, fandom shit. So you're just, like, reposting. It's just, like, yeah, you're reblogging someone else's stuff, like it's Twitter. Like, yeah, it's, like, retweeting something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. Were you into, like, any YouTubers before you became... Oh, God. Yeah, I think that's why even now I'm able to, like, recall the things that I can. It's because, like, I was a viewer before I was a creator and even now I've stayed being a viewer because I genuinely love the mm-hmm. platform. Um, so yeah, for years I was uh, not super big into OTL, big Jenna Marbles person. Um, what was it? Charlie is so cool. Like, yeah. Oh, OG. yeah. yeah. Um, oh, snap. God, what's another one? Um, it's funny because when I was young, I really liked the leasing. <laughs> <laughs> I was so into Superwoman. <laughs> and uh, God, who else? I'm like blinking now because I feel like everyone changed their name. Did um, you like Dan and Phil? Were you into the really. were you I in, never in got British? In, I never got into Dan and Phil. Like Charlie is so cool, like is British. But yeah. like other than that, like no, I don't think I ever really got into Dan and Phil. I never got into Tyler Oakley. I knew of them. I knew of Troy Savon mm-hmm. and all of them. But like I never got into like that whole group for some reason. I don't know why. I feel like so many people aren't really aware that Troy Sivan used to be like a huge People keep calling YouTuber. him an industry plant. And it's like, I need you guys to go outside. <laughs> like, <laughs> not everything, not everyone is an industry plant, but also he's like just been in the scene. Him, um, Sean Mendez, Charlie Puth are like the main musical people that started on social media that I think successfully mm-hmm. transferred over, which is why mm-hmm. some of them get called industry plants. They've been there. They've been on for a long time, mm-hmm. like a long time. That's wild. Lily Sings is one that I was like talking to you guys about. They're like, I don't. They don't like. We were talking about it. We're like, they don't recall. But like, I remember when, she, like, that was like the. It was a huge era on, yeah. on YouTube. Like a huge era. I know that you that you got your start going to her events, which I don't know what. The, how was that? So basically, what it was is that I well, I made my. Ch- I'm about to celebrate ten years on YouTube. Oh, this congratulations! October. Yeah. yeah, when are you celebrate it? When are you celebrating? Uh, it's that? the 27th of October. I celebrated the first video that I posted. Oh, perfect! So it, the video is still on my channel. It's called Cliche First Video. I keep it up there to keep me humble to remember when I couldn't edit <laughs> or speak, and I was doing like I was doing such a weird YouTube mashup voice. I think I'm doing a voice of like Jenna Marbles and Gen X Pen. Like it's a weird mix. Of their voices. I it's did, not me. I did notice. I did notice. It's it. not my voice. <laughs> it's not your it's voice. So, like even sixteen year old Amanda, I'm like, who is that? Well, I saw I saw the I, I saw one of those voice. videos and I was like, Amanda's different. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know if it's just because she's young here. But I her, fully something different. It's I stuff fully in the voice. did it because I wanted to be famous. Yeah. I was like, I want to be and in movies. I want to get cast <laughs> in movies. These girls are getting cast in movies. I'm gonna mm. get discovered. So I just have to show that I'm pretty with my face full of braces and like that's what's gonna get me discovered. Um but I did that for years. I did, there's a two year gap in there because I half my face froze from Bell's palsy, which is a whole side tangent we don't have to go into. I had it too. Okay, were you like 18? Because I was 18 <laughs> when I got it. I was 14. Okay, I was What's, 18. I, what is going so, on? Okay, Bell's so it's got to be makeup. It's got to be like one of these these big companies like putting something in the. I didn't. I left an then. abusive household. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you <didn't care. laughs> You can't ba- you can't blame the makeup industry on this one. <laughs> I didn't want it to. Because me and Raph didn't have Bell's palsy. I got but it. I didn't have an abusive of household. Just a quiet one. I just had a really foreign dad. Is that kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like abuse. <laughs> I got oh, mine I at a religious camp that I didn't want to be at. Okay, this makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So for me, no, because I was so basically, I, it was a week after I turned 18. And I realized that I it was starting because my friend had got me like a bunch of these lipsticks for like my birthday. And I was trying them on and I was like, my lips aren't puckering normally. And because what Bell's palsy is, is there's all these nerves that go down into your face, that like make your face move. Mm-hmm. And Bell's palsy is when half of them becomes paralyzed. So like the entire right side of my face became paralyzed. Oh, you wow. look stroked out, basically. Yeah. Oh. So like um, I <laughs> I went to the ER and they were like, OK, are you on steroids? Because like, apparently another 18 year old had come in earlier that day and she was a student athlete on steroids. She had to admit that. And they were like, okay, are you on uh. steroids? I'm like, do I look like I'm a student athlete too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Girl Scout. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so they were like, okay, then it could be a tumor. Like it could be something else because sh- this shouldn't be happening at mm-hmm. your age. Um, and uh, the, pa- the abusive house that I left was also the one that had control of my medical history. So they were there with me. So they flipped out, which of course did not help the stress of the Ooh. situation. 
Um, but basically after a bunch of MRIs and tests, they were like, okay, you have no tumor. It's probably just the stress. So now looking back, <laughs> your body's your literally face shutting can down. Up from stress. Basically, what it was is that I had been in survival mode for so long that finally being out of that abusive household for a month, my body thought it was under attack. Oh. So it's like it basically like shut down because it thought that it was like some being calm. Uh -huh. It felt foreign to my body, so it like shut down. Whoa. Jesus Christ. I can't wait till I'm finally calm and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to that, dance, buddy. <laughs> that's insane. Because So whenever I went, I was at an Islamic camp for two weeks. Mm. I only went because my friends are going and I didn't want to be alone for two weeks. I woke up one day and I looked in the mirror and I just like couldn't move half of my face. It was this side. And nobody believed me. They like gaslit me. They're like, oh, like you're like you're just like seeing things. You have photosensitive eyes. They were saying my eyes are like dry. Oh. Because, look, whenever you have Bell's palsy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know Getting sick around different. a bunch of Arabs sounds so no, bad. No, dude. It was, it was, and they wouldn't let me call my mom either. I was 14 years old. Because when you have Bell's palsy, you know, like when you yeah. blink, like that shit's on delay. Like I literally, <laughs> no, I literally had to stop going to one comic book shop because the guy thought I was flirting with him. Because I, I couldn't blink normally. <laughs> IRL lag. <laughs> it, <laughs> so it was. It was. <laughs> I literally had to sleep with an eye patch because your eye doesn't stay shut. Your literal eyelid is like paralyzed. It's like you Are there any pictures of you with an eye patch? No. Like, <laughs> I made sure of that. I didn't, there's no videos. There's no nothing. I Yo, made sure. Amanda I was lit. frozen with. I was frozen for like two months. I, I hit it really Pirate well. Amanda arc. <laughs> they wouldn't let me call my mom. I knew uh -huh. something was wrong. I had no cell phone service. Mm -hmm. I got off the bus. My mom looked at me. She's like, what the fuck is wrong with your face? She's like, you have Bell's palsy. My mom's a nurse. And mm -hmm. she took me to the urgent care and they gave me medication. Mm -hmm. And it cleared up in about a month. Oh, sick. Okay. But I was just like, how the fuck did this happen? <laughs> yeah, no, they were like, you need to cut out stress. I'm like, well, I'm a senior in high school. My I, my parents abusive and I'm a full time Girl Scout and I'm in mock trial and college. And they were like, OK, figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they tell a kid that they're like, no, hey, man, no you one really recommended got... therapy. Not a single person. <laughs> like, no, Screw therapy. Kaiser Permanente. <laughs> yeah. Not a single one of you recommended therapy. It's uh, crazy. You would think that the social worker would have been like, hey, like, here's like. Oh, there was never a social worker in that room. <laughs> <laughs> my school called no one. No. So basically was it I, out here. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So I basically, I dropped out of mock trial. Uh, I just decided I was going to go to junior college. I stopped applying to colleges and I was like, okay, I guess that's it. Cause like I was, a, I was a troop president of Girl Scout troop. Like I couldn't just walk away from that. I'd been doing that for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I'm super cool. I have, a, I have an award <laughs> and everything. Um, so yeah, that was that. So we had two months of that and you know, that was super fun. And I love that the parent that I walked away from decided to make it the other parents problem. So super fun. <laughs> or tried to say that the school was just, they were just so hard on us, you know? So that's, that's really fun. <laughs> I can laugh about it now because now it's funny. But at the time I was like, I want to walk into traffic. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it, it would be easier. It literally ruins you. Like yeah. it, because you're just like, I look fucking stupid. Like some people have like permanent effects. Like, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. How long did you have it for? Two months. Two months? Oh, so wow. like I, I remember like one of the things like my family got mad at me because we had a Thanksgiving celebration and I had to eat in the kitchen with my aunt who literally had a feeding tube because she had ALS. And so I was like, listen, I can't chew with my like food was falling out of my mouth. because you, you can't just sharing the feeding tube between your. No, oh, okay. <laughs> but I was just like, I felt like it was rude for me to sit at the table where I like I literally could not keep food in my mouth. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just gonna eat in the kitchen over yeah. the sink. So it's like not. To, and they were like, oh, it's like, it's so rude. A man won't sit with us. I'm like, do you want me to just drool on the table? It's whatever you want. <laughs> Like, I already feel like... You already put grandma in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping her company. I yeah, won't leave me alone. Chill. I'm being the nice one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying not to be rude. And be, it's like, <laughs> you're being a real big dick right now with half your face walking yeah. away. <laughs> like, no, it's it's weird. It's weird. So, I know we were talking about YouTubers before. Mm. Um, whenever you went to TanaCon, did you like Tana or were you just going for the vibe? Because I know... So for those of you who don't know TanaCon, like, can you explain TanaCon to yeah. us? Yeah, so TanaCon was one of the, like, I think it's just, I consider it, like, one of the, like, all-timer disaster events in social media. <laughs> like, if there's ever a history textbook of, like, social media and its downfall of society, like, TanaCon is going to be in there. Um, so basically what it was is there is this YouTuber named Tana Mojo who is still on the scene. And she um, was known as like the wild child of YouTube, okay? And she's like a couple months younger than me. But she had been banned from VidCon. 
um, for a variety of reasons. And uh, she made a video calling them out and then was like, we're going to do a meet and greet at the same time as VidCon. And her tour company at the time was like, let's just do Tanacon. And so they planned it in a month. She was in Hawaii for two weeks of that month. Um, and I went because I had just started my I Tried to See Don't Have To series, which is basically what I still do now, which is literally me going interviewing things. Mm -hmm. And which is really um, cool. It sets you apart from like a lot of the other people because you actually are there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And so for that, I was like, okay, first year event, it could either be incredible or it could be awful. And it was also the first event that Shane Dawson was going to be at in literally, I think five years. Cause mm -hmm. he, he stopped going to events altogether because of his social anxiety. Cause he was mm -hmm. just getting too big. And so the fact that he was going to be there, I think that's why most people were there. The lineup was like, it was like Bella Thorne. Uh, Shane they Dawson. were dating at the time. Her and Tana. And oh, um, wow. Colleen. Yeah, Colleen. A bunch of other YouTubers that had just been told, like, listen, you're too not family friendly for VidCon because that's when VidCon what, was very family friendly. I remember, I think we were there the same year because I was mm -hmm. like, I, I think that that year or like one of the years that I looked at your videos, we were there and it's all kids. It's like yeah. literally 13 year olds. Like I walked in, I felt uncomfortable. I'm like, I'm leaving. I went, I went in on the food beast badge. It's still <laughs> very young. It's gotten younger. Really? A, a lot of the sponsors, they're mad at me right now. So I can talk about this. Um, I'm not going to get invited to be a feature creator again. Um, but you should start swell con. They, people ask me that all Swelling. the time. Swelling. Swelling. <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> <laughs> it's, no. it's an adult only convention. <laughs> 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 no kids. They're not give you any kids. There's yeah. some yeah. sort of problem. But basically, I it was like the whole point of Tanacon was that like oh everyone's a featured creator, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. there was so featured creator, which was a free ticket, and then there was featured fucking creator, which was seventy five dollar VIP. And the thing is, is that free tickets sold out immediately, and I was like, okay, I'll buy a ticket so I can uh, the the paid ticket so I can review the full event. And then I get there and everyone I speak to has a paid ticket. <laughs> and, but the funniest part is that like the night before I'm like planning all this out, it's gonna be a two day event. The night before we get an email that includes that they move the timeline. So like, oh yeah, doors open at 10, but you can start lining up at 6 a.m. Which originally they said we couldn't line up until like eight. Where was this like at? That. This was off of Harvard Boulevard, literally like a block away from VidCon. What hotel was it at? It was but, one of the Marriott's, yeah. one of the smaller that Marriott's. Not gonna house that no. many people. Oh <laughs> no. my God. They basically sold tickets before they had a venue, which is one of the mistakes that most events always make. Jesus, <laughs> I, but, I know that Marriott. So <laughs> I don't remember this happening, but I was like reading like tickets are free, but then like they made it a dollar. Like, yeah, so you'd have paid like the taxes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh. So that's the, that's the nature of just tickets now, especially in California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, the the funniest thing about that email is, that the, and this is when I I knew things were probably not going to be what they were sold as because Tana would just tweet things like, "Oh yeah, there's going to be all these goodie bags. There's going to be all this stuff." And I was like, "There's no way you can execute this like this." And this is like, I don't have these this type of experience with events, but I like had helped my dad put on events and things like that. So I was like, okay. But the night that email where they told us to change the time at the very bottom, it said, and remember, no refunds, smiley face. <laughs> and that was the end of the email. <laughs> yo, that's like a fuck to you. <laughs> hey, yo, and remember, no refunds. It was like the first, it was like the first fire festival, but for you two. It was <laughs> so, it was so, I was like, oh, this is going to be insane. So I probably got in line around 6 30, 7 a.m. I didn't get in until 1 p.m. <laughs> what? Oh, Were you like one of the first in line or was there people in front of you? There was probably, I was one of, I think, a thousand people that got inside. Okay. Because most people did not get inside. A lot of people that made videos reviewing it did not get inside, which is why my footage, if you've seen footage, seen footage from inside the event, it's very likely it's my footage. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. When I found out like Shane Dawson used yours yeah. in his documentary, I was like, what the fuck? I've still never met him. I don't think I want to. At the time, I was like, can't have me in your documentary you're gonna use all my footage like he did credit me which mm -hmm. i do appreciate mm -hmm. um and he followed me back which was very at the time this is before we knew everything i yeah. guess you could say um at the time like he followed me and i was just like oh damn he followed me like i just kind of tweeted that as you do when yeah. someone big follows you and yeah. you have you originally had, i had 400 subscribers this time this jumped me to 5,000. Mm -hmm. um oh that's crazy yeah that was just the blog itself that did that and then or no was it a, god what was it I basically, the vlog itself got me a chunk of followers. And then I did a sit down, I tried it so you don't have to, like the mm -hmm. way my format is now, where I basically just told everything that I couldn't get on camera. Okay. Or like translated the footage in like the way, storytelling wise, the way I do now. And that got me, so it was like a thousand subscribers for the vlog. 
I got like 5,000 subs for the sit down. And so I was like, okay, that's where my value is. Okay. It's like, yeah, I'm there, but the way I can tell a story, that's where like the audience actually likes me more than anything. Oh, which is crazy because a lot of commentary YouTubers, like the, the, what's easy, what's easy and hard about commentary is like you find a topic, you talk about it, but when you're actually going there, you're giving value that like nobody else has, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. especially you being at Tanacon, that's huge. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I probably made more money on Tanacon than they lost on Tanacon. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw the craziest thing that I saw was you going on the Dr. Phil show and arguing yes. with Michael. Yes. Who I remember, I because I was a big YouTube stan at yeah. the time. So like I remember all this stuff and I remember him like him in the documentary with Shane and the, him being like, it was Tana. They were like pointing fingers like the Spider-Man meme yeah, at yeah. each other. Like, no, she did it. No, he did it. Or like, and I was like, but then you were arguing with him. But <laughs> I looked him up recently and he's tweeting like, he's like, don't believe everything you hear on the internet. Also, is anyone free in LA to do a photo shoot? Like the next yeah. one? And it's like yeah. one like. I'm like, bro, you like think, nobody. Yeah. Well, how was that? How was the Dr. Two, Phil? Two years ago, he applied for bankruptcy, apparently. Really? Oh, so he? he applied for bankruptcy for so Good Times Live, which was the event company that actually put it on his company. He was 22 at the time. Like he was young. That's crazy. He, that was that company. Then they announced Good Times Live, which I was able to prove via uh, trademark filing that he did actually have that company before. He didn't like use the bankruptcy to like fund this company basically right. um he tried to basically re-up the tanacon um uh trademark at one point and like made a new website and was going to do tanacon too oh my god <laughs> without tana oh my god that's insane <laughs> but basically so the dr phil show basically they didn't want me on the show they wanted my footage and i talked my way into getting on the show <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're like you're not gonna shame Dawson me. No, basically, this time I'm coming with the that's, footage. That's, I can see Amanda just coming in with a bag and just holding on to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, well, like that was one of the because that was after my channel took off. That was like in 2020 that happened because I basically had realized at that point once the Lily Singh video took off. Um, I had been reached that, and then I had Quibi take off right after. I was the first YouTuber to make a review of Quibi. Oh my god! The, the, we crazy, the Quibi, craziest that yeah, yeah, my I had my ex girlfriend worked there, and then she described it to us before it came out. She's mm -hmm. like, "This is what it is." Blah blah. I was like, "That's called YouTube." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they didn't make a YouTube channel. I still don't get it. No, but basically, I was like, "What is this?" But there was a free trial where you got it early access, like six days of Quibi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, "Okay." So then the day it actually launched is the day I released the video. Oh. reviewing Quibi and so like the genius I was like the first one to have a video of Quibi and so I had a bunch of these like MCNs and managers and companies trying to reach out to me to like represent me and sign with them and I took every single phone call and I flipped every single phone call on itself because it's always funny they always think creators are stupid mm -hmm. it's they fascinating really do. well some of them are some of them are some are <laughs> We need them to not think that, though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we need them to at the very least Raph's respect like, that we're stupid. humans. I'm a creator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dumb, dumb. <laughs> but basically, they all, it's so funny because without fail, they would all start with, like, where do you see yourself in five years with your content? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I would flip it around and be like, actually, I want to know why you felt the need to reach out to me. Like, what about my content interest you? And I would, like, Smart. flip it because mm. you're trying to get me to sign with you. This is not, an, you're not interviewing me. No, it's a partnership. <laughs> like, I don't understand that. that. This is a great thing for my manager. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm serious because it's like you're, at the very least, I'm trusting you with the, like, my career is my is me. You know, yeah. that's the entirety mm, yeah. of who I am. And, like, I, I'm supposed to trust you, not the other way around. And so one, a lot of them would be very weirded out that I knew what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I understood finances. And they were, and I literally had one company say, you know, did you go to school for business or anything like that? And they were like, they were trying to figure out what I knew so they could figure out what they could pull over on me. Yeah, they do that. That's important. I think that's important for just anybody in the entertainment industry. If you're in front of the camera to just mm -hmm. understand and know is that it, it's a partnership. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not working for this person. You guys are working together and it has to be mm -hmm. a copacetic relationship. And a lot of even actors that I know, they'll sign with a management company or an agency without knowing why they, what they see, what that agency or management company sees in that actor. Yeah. And they'll also let the manager kind of take care of like a lot of other stuff and just take the back seat. But for me personally, I'm very involved. I'm like, what's the, what's, why is, why is this contract the way it is? What's the buyout? You can't what's be a passenger princess no, in your career. Not. I, I had that I had that happen to me one time when when Snapchat was blowing up. They uh, at the time you can get a million dollars per snap. Yeah. So they were called. They were DMing a bunch of TikTok creators, and they were like, "Hey, like these were random companies," and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna work with you on Snap. We're gonna take your footage. We're gonna post it to Snap, and we're gonna take fifty uh, percent." And I was like, 
And I was like, and I reached out to them. I was like, so, so what are you taking 50% of? They're like, oh, like just, we'll give you the money. I'm like, no, you're just going to take my footage, post it on Snapchat. If it goes viral, you take my money. And the guy was like, this seems like not a relationship for us to work on any further. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, because I called you out. I'm like, all you're going to do is post my, you're going to repost my shit. Like, mm -hmm. I had one company straight up be like, how old are you? And I was like, at the time I was 22. I was like, oh, I'm 22. And they're <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I knew he was a queen. There's no fucking way this is happening right now. There's he's absolutely so no fucking way this is happening. Hi, you snore. You snored. I'm so tired. For those listening in, for those who don't know what happened, our producer Scoop fell asleep. And he was snoring. Okay. He just took a red eye back from Austin, so he's very <laughs> tired right now. I took one back from Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a little Scoot. more I'm a little more used to this. Scoot is just, just getting used to the, the swell yeah. era of travel. <laughs> oh, poor guy. <laughs> I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> I knew you, I saw you were asleep and I was like, oh no, he's so tired. And then he snored, I'm sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I had a, oh, I had a man. company straight up tell me it's like, oh, usually we just offer people money and they say yes. And yeah. I was like, I'm not giving you 30 percent of my ad revenue. No, like, that's, that's just that's not insane. happening. But so basically going that whole experience, I was like, OK, so I can talk my way into the same way I was able to talk myself into staying in the Titanic on. I was able to talk myself through, you know, business negotiations. So I was like, OK, I can get myself on Dr. Phil show. Mm -hmm. So they wanted the footage. And I was like, I got them to pay me for the footage because you should always get these tv shows to pay you for the footage because they have the budget especially if they're going to be posting it on youtube and on actual live television so um that we were just talking and they were like the producer just liked me i think because i was like willing to talk shit because yeah. they wouldn't tell me who i was going to be confronting i thought it might be tana oh, so, they, so, they, so, so they told you yeah. you're going to confront someone they were like yeah some one of the organizers is here and like wants uh... to and they kept kind of saying like I think they were doing this on purpose. They kept like using like she and things like that. So yeah. they were trying to bait you into thinking like, hey, I'm coming to talk to Tana. Yeah, and then yeah. when you I'm show up, you're like, that. that's Michael. <laughs> yeah, well, at the yeah. very least, they what they wanted was a bunch of TanaCon attendees in the audience. So like a few of the girls that I know ended up, that I ended up meeting through TanaCon were actually in their audience, uh, the digital audience that they had there because of uh, COVID during, it was during mm -hmm. 2020. So um, I was like, oh, I'm in Orange County. Like I can come in. And um, they were like, you know, because we have to have him here, which it ended up being Michael Wiest, uh, who was, you know, the CEO of Good Times, the one who put on the event. Mm -hmm. um, they were like, we have to have him here. So like, we have to be careful of how many people we are here. And there was a bunch of people that had worked with him, a former client of his and things like that. They were like, these are the people we need in, in the studio. And I was like, okay, that's fair. So I was on a video call, which, it's really funny because I was like, I couldn't have the air on. So I was like, I feel like I'm so red in that interview <laughs> because I was literally melting. And then I was angry. So like I was getting, I was blushing a lot because I was angry. <laughs> like, no. what did you do, Michael? <laughs> why, is no. so, why is it so fucking Calm like my house? Because I was sitting Calm there, down. I was sitting there watching. I was like, one, Dr. Phil was very, uh, I'll give him this. He was very uh, respectful of me in that interview. Obviously, I was during video call, so I didn't. I wasn't like alone with him or anything yeah. like that. But like, he was very much like interested in letting me speak. But I also they had me film a like two minute video to send to him. So it's like so he's up to date basically. Yeah. Um, and so I was just like, I need to stay calm and eloquent and just like <laughs> enunciate as much as I can to make it clear. Like, you have a beautiful voice. <laughs> <laughs> like no, but they <laughs> they tried to produce me before I went on. Oh, so really? like the producer called me and was like, we want you to come for him. Michael is pissing off everyone. He's like demanding special water. He demanded a stylist. He's demanding all these things. And everyone's just so mad. So like whatever you want to throw at him, just do it. And I was like, no, of course. Oh, but I already wow. knew how I was going to do this because I was like, this dude is lying. Like even just watching the clips that they had like kind of been like playing through like the recording. I was like, he's just lying through his teeth. So like I was already mad. Yeah, but that's insane to be yeah. like, hey, he wants you. It's like, what is he like? It feels like a boxing match. Yeah, like, yeah. This guy wants your family. He wants your kids. You got to be a contender. You got yeah. you got a hot of gold. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but he was he was on the defensive, obviously, especially when I was like, we can talk about all the stuff you lied about because he was like, I want to apologize for anything you went through. And I, I was yeah. like, that's cool. I appreciate that. Can we talk about what you lied about? <laughs> <laughs> 
so because he tried to say they'd been planning TanaCon for a year, which was just not true we knew it wasn't true two weeks yeah she got mad because she wasn't a featured creator at vidcon which was announced like what what does yeah. a feature creator mean you just like, shit to like buy you a ticket? are you are not buying a ticket they will cover your travel you'll get a hotel room uh specialty access to the hyatt you'll get which is like basically the new vidcon for like creators now it's where people hang out because okay. they can't be on the floor they don't want you on the floor so they make the hyatt like really cool that's what i heard I, and I, yeah yeah so, and then there's also like obviously you're you're you have the chance of like being on the side of the building you're in all the pr it's like it's kind of a big deal for a lot of creators at least mm. industry wise it is weird though that like someone that big, they you would be like, hey, just go walk the floor. If she was promised a uh, featured creator, which is what made her really mad. Like whenever it was announced, she wasn't a featured creator. She and was then... also on the side of the building because of Escape the Night. She was in Escape the Night. Oh, that's oh. bullshit! Like, yeah. and so she was she was on a panel for them, but they wouldn't make her a featured creator. So like, you also when you're a featured creator, you get access to the behind the scenes routes mm -hmm. so that you're not walking the floor. Right. I mean, we, we remember when we had bodyguard at. You oh know, yeah, I miss TwitchCon. Them. Yeah, I miss, I miss them so I miss much. Them the way so we much. met Amanda is we met Amanda at TwitchCon, and Frogan had security detail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget when I first when you and I first met in person. Like we went and hugged, and I remember seeing one of them like ready to go. I was like, "Do I look like a threat?" <laughs> you take steroids. You're an <laughs> Let's go. It was so weird because like there are times I'd be like, "They're okay. <laughs> they're okay." <laughs> it was funny because they would look over and we're like, and they're like. Yeah, proceed. Yeah. <laughs> I think they liked me after we talked about like the the code phrase. I think after that they were like, okay, she she gets it. Yeah. She's cool. <laughs> Jerry and Sydney, if you're watching for some reason, we miss you. Y'all yeah. <laughs> were cool. We're going to send this podcast to them. Check this out. Yeah. 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 yeah please subscribe though. Yeah. <laughs> we need yeah. it. Yeah, hit subscribe. <laughs> Give it a like. Um So so yeah. her 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 getting kind of snubbed at Tanner or, or, or at TwitchCon. What happened with you? You said that you, you were like I I hate TwitchCon or I could talk about it now. Or VidCon. Oh, VidCon. 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 Sorry, VidCon. So now I, I don't hate VidCon. I I am an event review YouTuber um, mm -hmm. and I reviewed VidCon. I've done three videos on VidCon. Yeah. I did one in obviously uh, 2019, no 2020, 2022, and then 2023 for Anaheim VidCon specifically. And for 2022 and 2023, I was a, a decent sized creator. And so my management was like submitting me for it and they just kept denying me. And last year for Anaheim VidCon, I was specifically told like she doesn't have enough subscribers and one person was like really trying to lobby for me it's like she's getting the views of someone with one million yeah. like why not let her in and they just, someone just kept saying no and so but because of the fact that i am essentially a creator's creator a lot of creators know me um and also i know a lot of people at youtube a bunch of people at youtube are like well we want you to come and meet these people in our lounge so they gave me hyatt access which is the hotel access which companies and different sponsors can like they get a certain number of wristbands yeah. okay so i got in that way and so again, I wasn't going to do a review, but then a bunch of people were like, including, I'll say this, I think in the video, they came up to me and they're like, so we have suffered your video because <laughs> we think they're having an identity crisis. And um, a bunch of other creators were like, okay, for your video, here's this. Because that happens a lot now. Yeah. Um, which, because they know that I'm like, oh, if Amanda's at an event, it's probably because she wants to do a video. And it's mm -hmm. like, sometimes I don't like doing repeat videos if I can help it. But in that instance, I was like deputized by like a good 10, 20 creators. Okay. And so I made my video and one of the people that apparently had lobbied for me was like, hey, let's go and get lunch and like talk. Okay. And because uh, one of the things that they really wanted to disprove was a bunch of creators that were staying at the Hyatt actually, because I was just staying at my dad's place, um, was like, hey, I think they're selling access to fans to the Hyatt. Oh, and a crazy. bunch of creators individually came. VidCon came. itself? Or that's just somebody was thought. like scalping? Well, they thought that VidCon had like on the back end been selling tickets to fans because there was a lot of kids there and someone was like, there's a lot of kids running around. I was like, yeah, they're famous children. And they mm. were like, no, these ones aren't like these. They're they're just out and about basically oh, with wow. the Hyatt okay. access. And so this person from VidCon wanted to tell me like, listen, I want you to know that that's fundamentally untrue. We do have issues with counterfeit badges and things like that every year. Um, we did confiscate quite a few but we do not sell access. And I said, okay, but the problem is, is that your featured creators think you are. Mm -hmm. So that's something that needs to be looked at. So, mm -hmm. but we, we talked for like a good two hours. I felt like it was a very productive conversation. And then Baltimore VidCon was happening. Yeah. Which they wanted to make their East Coast uh, location. And so about, a, I don't know if I scared them. I don't know what happened. Cause I'm, people expect me to switch up when I'm sitting in front of them after mm -hmm. I do a review, but I'm very much like, I don't say anything on camera. I wouldn't say to someone's face, and that yeah. goes with an event as well. I was gonna say, like knowing you, you know, knowing you, it doesn't feel like you're the type that's like, yeah, let me get the juice, and then be like, 
F you, I'm, I'm going to switch. Yeah, the, I just sit there yeah. like, oh, no, I didn't mean it like that. Like, that's just not who I am. No, like, I mean, I saw I saw your most recent video. You reviewed streamer awards in front of cutie yeah. like in the chat you know yeah. so which is wild but yeah, yeah. we continue so then but baltimore. it's yeah so baltimore they like a week or so later which i left that meeting without any indication that they were gonna offer me featured creator a week later they offered me featured creator for yeah. baltimore so i go to baltimore and i don't they never said don't do a review yeah they never said anything and there was a lot of issues with the first year of baltimore vidcon mainly safety issues with the creators and a lot of creators that were there were unhappy and, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like they know that I have no problem being honest, but like a lot of creators don't want to put their names to a complaint, which I get because mm -hmm. they think that like it'll come back to them in some way. Yeah. Or they're just worried about being blacklisted. Yeah. And I'm like, I already I make good money. I'll pay for my own ticket. It's fine. Right. You know, I know who I am. My integrity is a little more important than just like being invited to a party, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. So um, I made the video mainly talking about security issues and things like that. And they were not happy not um really. which they a lot one of the people the person i met with was not happy that i included that we had met but like one we met during a work day it was very clear like they mentioned like the other people that were there and i was like okay if you if it was a secret which i didn't disclose anything that was secret of the of the conversation i just said like look this is them coming and talking to a creator wanting to know what's wrong like which i thought was a very good note because a lot of creators think they don't listen to us so it's okay. like this is an active example of them yeah, wanting nice. to know more mm -hmm. that's all i talked about yeah and so that was that. But then basically because of that video, the rest of the people at VidCon, I guess, went through the rest of my other VidCon videos. And they were like, she is someone on the inside because she has information she shouldn't have. Oh. And I was like. People don't realize that companies that big, like th the company is so big that you're going to get information like people talk. Well, the VidCon team is actually surprisingly small. Oh, they're owned it? by Paramount, but they're the team itself is very small, is my mm. understanding. Wasn't it originally uh, Hank and the Green yeah, Brothers? Yeah, the Green okay. Brothers, they sold to Viacom, which okay. is now uh, basically Paramount. Is okay. Who owns it. Right. Yeah. Viacom was like the OG of like MTV, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so massive media company, which I think is a, a lot of the problem because obviously they don't want creators they want young fans which is why you see the average attendance age and the sponsors like there's a lot of toy sponsors these mm. usually um there's uh there was a at vidcon baltimore there was a blow-up corn maze what the porn maze corn corn oh oh boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a yeah. Blow -up. well it was wow. it what was the, like you think it, that that's it did all? feel like half a convention which like I, I would be interested in going again this year to see how they grow they're not going to invite me back but i'll pay on my own and go uh -huh. again um, but basically again, it's like no one ever said, Hey, to be a featured creator, we need you to not do a video on us, which I probably wouldn't have accepted if that was the case, which maybe they knew that, but like, I don't think I'm the person that they think like, Oh yeah, if we invite her, like, she'll just be nice to us. I do joke that if you feed me, I will be 10% nicer. So like always feed me in events. I will be nicer, but I won't just like ignore very clear safety issues. Like I shouldn't be in the coffee shop of our hotel that's supposed to be a secret where we're staying yeah. and see fans waiting around for Ranboo to order a coffee so they can get a photo with him. Like that should not be happening. Right. When you have major creators like Ranboo and Odd Ones out who have very rabid fan bases who will wait around. Like even something simple as like, oh, there was multiple female creators that I spoke to where we were literally talking about like, oh yeah, here's how we all have creepy people folders and how we all have plans of like what we do when we go to our PO boxes to make sure that like no one can send us an air tag and figure out where we live. Like, like, that's such an insane thing now that people can ooh. just send you a fucking air tag. And oh, then, one of the girls while we were there, like we were all talking and she just paused and she was like, started texting me. I was like, is everything okay? And she's like, I just realized I'm one state away from one of like the people that's on my watch list. Like they, if they wanted to show up and find yeah. me, they could. Cause it's like one of the people that's like, that's who I'm worried about. And so she was like texting like her management and like a friend to be like, listen, like just in case, like get all this stuff. And it's like, those are re the reality. And so and even then, like, I talked to someone who was, like, a former head at VidCon, no longer associated with the company, but, like, just comes to events at VidCon Baltimore. And uh, he, I was like, yeah, this, like, a lot of us are really upset about the security issues. This is while we're at the event. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, but mobbing's not a big thing anymore. Oh, my God. And I was like, what? I need to understand. I want you to go to any female creator you see in this vicinity, and I want you to see her DM requests. And I want you to tell me that she is safe from walking to her hotel room and not someone not following her with a knife. Like... You, it's not about being mobbed. It's about physical safety. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they we there was a the YouTuber who got shot at one of yeah. these events, like these meet and greets, and like mm -hmm. taking a oh, that's Christina the, Grimmie. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. what happened. Like, at, I remember she got shot at her concert. Yeah, yeah. But it was still, a meet like, and greet after the fact. Yeah. Still meet and greet. Right. You know. So basically, what ends up happening is like 
when we did TwitchCon last year, like the first day, I remember they were like, oh yeah, you guys can go in. And I was like, you know, stressed. I was like, you know, the second day they had metal detectors. People were just walking around them. And I'm like, dude, so many of them don't use, this is the thing that's been really bugging me that I've been noticing a trend of ever since they started lifting mask mandates, bag checks and metal detectors are also going away. Yeah. And it's no. really, it's becoming very lackadaisical. Yeah. yeah. Or is this just the like, what's like the worst safety? Like what's the most lax event have you ever been to that you were like, oh shit, like this is vid like summit. Hi. Um, <laughs> Uh, co-owned by Mr. Beast and Daryl Eves. Oh, boy. Um, Mr. Beast just slaps his name on it. I don't know how actually involved he is, but it's mm -hmm. mainly Daryl Eves' event. Okay. He runs Channel Jumpstart. He's a mentor to a lot of creators. I've, I've read his book, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, security, I think they had one security guard at their event in Texas. Um, and, you know, the badges are very similar from last year. I had people who openly said, like, oh, yeah, this is my badge from last year. I don't have my badge from this year. Um, like I just didn't buy a badge this year. No bag checks, no nothing. And again, it's like it, it that one, there were so many people, it was so all over the place. It's a three-story event. If something bad happened, like it would be at the very least, we'd have uh injuries, let alone yeah. casualties. Yeah, yeah. We're also in an open carry state. Yeah. We were in Texas. And mm -hmm. as someone was like, Yeah, but like this is such an underground event. I was like, I if Mr. if someone found out that Mr. Beast was here and he could and one person was like, oh, yeah, I could cause a ripple effect in the creator economy right now at this one event where there's all these like big business hotshot YouTubers, Ryan Trahan, Michelle Carre, oh, all these shit. They big were there YouTubers. with no security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it oh, was, well, some of them had their times. own security. But like, I'm sorry, at an event like that, like where you're inviting creators, I don't think that there should be like the expectation like that you have to have your own security. Like. Even Dream at, uh, this is when he put the mask back on, um, at VidCon last year, he had his own security guards because there were people being like, I'm going to rip the mask off his head and put a cat ears on him. Like, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna put the cat hat back on his head. I'm going to free him even from thinking he's ugly. Like, it's, it, which is just insane that, like, your featured creators don't feel safe at your event. And mm -hmm. that's that that was VidCon. Do you want to laugh? I swear it's relevant. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> you, so, you have to come to me. You're talking to me. No, because. No, I'm not the broad. No, because. No, because. No, because. No, because. I heard you about to say something. No, go ahead. You're good. So, the reason why I had security at TwitchCon this last year was because I was getting threats. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're I just thought it was a fashion statement. Yeah. I, I figured it, it was. Right. A fashion I, statement, I was getting though. threats. Uh, people were talking about killing me, uh, ripping my scarf off. Yeah. The whole nine yards. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we're going to include this or not. Tell me if it's fine. But initially, yeah. Twitch didn't want to give me security. They're like, we totally understand if you don't want to come to the event anymore. Mm -hmm. Initially, they were like, no. <laughs> See, because like I went to like the Arab streamers like yeah. panel and you had talked about like at least before. I don't know if you talked about this actually on the panel, which we can all cut this if you want to cut no, or no, whatever. No, yeah. But like you had said that they'd come to you and been like, what do you need to feel safe to do the panel? What was crazy about which the Which I was like very impressed that they had done that, which sounds like the bare minimum. That but was, you would be shocked by how little that happened. That was after we lo she was able to lobby for security and get okay. it. No, yeah. To be fair to Twitch, I don't know if they they had messaged us and said like hey we're keeping an eye on the situation but i don't know if yeah. that was frogan or like because yeah. personal because security they don't because i emailed them asking for security and they're yeah. like we are totally aware of what's happening so they they already knew but they weren't going to give frogan individual security okay. uh, initially and then because i was like if i don't get security i'm not going to come to the event like i'm not going to feel yeah unsafe but right. then like literally like 30 minutes later they confirmed me okay mm -hmm. but the thing is like they i wasn't even asking for security at that point they reached out to Hassan to get my contact information so they can get me security. Oh, okay. okay. I got my timeline messed up. Then. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I yeah. remember that. Okay. So then they, they text me like, we don't know if we can get you security. Mm -hmm. And then. Okay. But they, it was something they were looking at on their end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not having security when you're a big creator at those events is, especially if you want to walk the floor. Yeah. Is, in, it's just insane. Yeah. Dude, Honestly. But even Hassan had, Hassan had security at the 2022. Mm -hmm. Did he? Yes, because he was walking the floor with nobody. He was walking. Watching. I remember no, he, had, he had he had oh. some people. I remember because I remember there was some. Um, I believe was it Aiden Ross or was there some? Aiden people? Ross had security, but too, people yeah. were yeah. running up on Hassan, like trying yeah. to fight him. Yeah, and no, the I remember security that. guard just like didn't do anything. Like Hassan literally, hard that day. Like he literally no no. Oh really? Didn't do it. Didn't do anything. Is that what you're saying? No, he didn't oh, do anything. Like so, he was like low key having to fend for himself. Yeah. No, that's, I've been seeing that a lot lately, and this was actually, I think at 2022, I saw this as well, where Minx was like, um, 
I just walked by one point and there was like one of those unofficial meet and greet lines that forms. Yeah. And I was like, at the very least, security should know to be like, at least check in and be like, hey, are you good? Or do we need to have and an excuse this, like, to get this out? Yeah. Because like all it takes is one person running mm-hmm. up, you know, it's like and that's that's why I don't blame creators who are just like, yeah, I'm doing my scheduled meet and greet. Mm-hmm. And that is it. Like, that's all I can do. It's I overwhelming. Feel like, I feel like a lot of people did that at this last TwitchCon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But even like I so. I used to go to Playlist Live mm-hmm. uh, way back in the day. It's a Florida I convention. Went once. <laughs> I went 2014 and 2015. I wanted to meet Dan and Phil. But and it, it's kind of weird, like, going as a fan and then now you're going, like, as a creator. Oh, it's very weird. Like, the s- mental switch you do, you're just like, I was, like, like that before. Mm-hmm. It, like, Playlist Live was insane. Mm-hmm. Like, even, like, myself, like, we, we would, like, camp out, like, at the um, fucking, like, pool waiting for YouTubers or, like, Viners to walk by to see who we knew. Mm-hmm. Or stand outside the hotel because we all were staying in the hotel that the con was at. Mm -hmm. It was just like a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, that one, I went in 2022 um, because it was just coming up and then it got canceled in 2023. I don't know if it's no longer. They said logistical reasons, which is code for they didn't sell tickets um, for 2023 because they did something weird where they tried to have you apply to Mm -hmm. like get tickets. And they put me as a community member and I think I had like 350,000 subs at the time. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. So like a bunch of creators are not going to go then right. if you're sticking all of us in community. Um, but it was weird because it was a lot of like newbie. We need to stop real quick just because he's got to swap the camera. So so going back to the uh, the uh, TwitchCon like security, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I did the I did the air panel like before all the stuff had happened overseas. And then they had reached out and they were like, they, what they said is they were like, if you don't want to do it, we're good. Yeah. You know? They were like trying to say like, oh, can you, we can cancel it easy. Yeah, That's they're like, they we can cancel do, it, yeah. but we support you. And I'm like, no, we're not canceling it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like, fuck that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. So then Frogan ended up getting security. But like, at TwitchCon. Bless you. <laughs> bless, you. <laughs> bless you, buddy. Yeah. Security's dead. It's that flight. It's that It's that. I love how sickness. Amanda is literally here performing. And she's like, I didn't sleep. It's good. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. I, I, am an, I used to work openings at a coffee shop. So like, I, I already can't sleep past day. You worked openings right. at a coffee shop that I went to from work every day. I don't want to leak it. But I feel, no, we can talk about it. I worked at what I called not a Starbucks for years. Yeah. So now it's, it's King Coffee. It's owned by the Dietrichs. It's, mm-hmm. it is what it is. They have multiple locations. I worked at the location. Um, <laughs> isn't, isn't the, uh, isn't the, um, isn't Dietrichs and Keen the same? Like it's his son or something it's like his, that? It's named after their son. Yeah. Oh. So basically Dietrichs Coffee was like a really popular chain and like the, 2000s i would say and then they sold mm. to starbucks but they had like a bunch of locations as well as like their own roastery company which is one of the brothers i believe that runs the roastery okay. company um but they were like yeah we want to go back to like the small coffee house feel so like there's no wi-fi in the coffee shops or anything like that it's all like we do latte art there's all this training for us we basically become like master baristas by the time I we're actually that. like making the coffee so yeah it was uh it was it was a good job i it's it's crazy because like i had been doing i worked retail at like a chain that i'm not gonna say because they do have the money to sue me this chain does um (laughs) it was a baby and kids clothes store you definitely know what it is um they were horrible like awful like i was a good employee like i got i got promoted three times in one year um like just starting and it was still just an awful company to work for so then to go to this coffee shop and to get a raise within like one month, they were like, listen, we can't promote you yet, but like, we want you to know how like, like, that's like super good. Nice. Yeah. I yeah. was like, oh my God, is this what it's like to be appreciated? <laughs> like, oh my God. Like when I was like, I, if it weren't for lockdown, I would have stayed longer. I left because I was basically becoming a full-time creator at the same time. Mm-hmm. And people in Orange County were awful during lockdown. I had someone yeah. go on a three week tirade trying to get me fired for telling him and his wife to pull up his mask. Like yeah. calling multiple locations, like this manager, I'm gonna get fired, and it's like, Haha, I'm not a manager, I'm just a bitch. Um, I just don't want to get sick. <laughs> I don't want to get a respiratory infection. Thank you. Um, I had someone flip a coffee across the counter at me because I like we we had to start putting the lids on because it used to be like, oh look, here's the latte art, and then you put the lid on yourself, but because yeah. we couldn't have people touching things because we were oh. right by the police station, yeah. So like any regulations that they rolled out, we had to follow because they could shut us down at any mm-hmm. point. And like, oh, that is by a police station. I just it's across the street. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. That was that was a lot. Um, But it was great. What was what was really upsetting is like uh, regulars that we that we thought were like the sweetest people ever flipped on a dime flipped. because they lost their jobs. We didn't. And we realized, oh, you always thought we were less than you mm-hmm. because we were like making your coffee. But now we get to keep our jobs and you don't because mm-hmm. we were deemed essential. 
And so that that was people. that was awful. And like they're like we would I love have how the pe- latte art is essential. Just like you know, no, just like no, but like dry dry goods like coffee no, beans yeah. Yeah, or dry yeah, goods. Yeah, no, we sold bread and things like that. Like mm-hmm. that is considered essential. Um, and I do think looking back, like there was a lot of things that like were essential that people didn't think were essential. Like for some people, like old people who can't bend down anymore, like the nail salon is essential because they can't mm. trim their own toes yeah. or, and things like that. So I don't know. I think there's there's a lot of things that happen with lockdown. But yeah, there was like, I was just really on the verge of burning out, like doing both jobs and people were just awful. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make it to like the end of July and then I'm going to put in my two weeks notice. Like I'm just, I'm going to walk away. And then we had literally like the next day after I talked to my dad, I was like, hey, I'm letting you know, I'm going to put in my two weeks notice. I'm going to give you a YouTube real shot. Um... <laughs> We had the worst shift I've ever had in my life <laughs> the following day. And I was like, I'm writing it on the back of a, a receipt and I'm handing it in. Like I'm, I'm putting in my two weeks notice. So I left in August of 2020 and I've been full time ever since. So, yeah. But they were they were really great about me leaving. They they off, they called me a couple of times and they were like, if you want shifts, we have space. If you want to come back. And I was like, I'm really busy. <laughs> I'm doing YouTube. Pretty famous. <laughs> you need to watch my channel. <laughs> well, doesn't, doesn't Bean from... Even Stevens work at Disney at a coffee shop now. Bean from Even Stevens, and no one believes me. Bean from Even Stevens works at Starbucks in Universal Studios. It's the Universal Studios, okay. yeah. Yes. Okay, and it, it, it's actually upsetting when you see it because you feel crazy. You're like, that's fucking beans. Like, <laughs> that's fucking beans. And, uh, I'm like, and then my, I remember my cousin's like, that's not, why would beans be here? I was like, I don't know, but that's beans. <laughs> and then I looked on Reddit, and there's a whole thread about people taking pictures with beans at that, that – it's a good mm-hmm. place to be. You get, yeah. you get recognized. Like if you want to work at a coffee shop, that's the best coffee shop. Yeah, I'm gonna be Capri Sun Poppy working at fucking Universal Studios. And come in. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, "That's Capri Sun Poppy." Like, I don't yeah, know who the fuck there, you're talking about. There or the Grove in L.A. Those oh yeah, cool. the Grove in L.A. I see so many people just like famous people that were like on like old TV shows when I was a kid, like just hanging around that Barnes and Noble. Like just purposefully hanging around. That is the mm-hmm. best Barnes and Noble in the world, though. I'm not gonna. It's lie. great until TikTokers run in yelling, and then do I'm like, really? I want to leave. Okay, well, do they sucks. do that? Yeah, I didn't. I've never been there. Also, the vibes are messed up since they did the remodel. I hate the. Re- I hate every Barnes and Noble remodel. I what does it look it. like? Oh. It's soulless and sad. It's awful. Do they just recently remodeled it. A bunch of the locations because they had a, they had an original design that was like okay. They had another design that was like, oh, this is actually comfy, cozy. I like being in it's here. It's not cozy. And then it's, it's like not cozy it's like anymore. if the Minotaur liked to read. Like it's like a yeah. re- labyrinth of books. I'm like, you guys are gonna have so Ooh. much theft. Like it's Ooh. there's so many blind spots here. But it's also like the coffee shop. They made it worse. The vibes are off. And I know it's worse because there was. I used to work out of that coffee shop um, a lot. But um, I stopped during the remodel because they were just like gutting everything, and it was just like I don't like this. But mm-hmm. there was one guy that whenever I would go and work there and edit there. I thought he was a genius. Um, so basically he would go, he was there every single day. He would have all of his stuff there, but he would talk loudly on the phone. I once listened to him recount the entire plot of the show Yellowstone on the phone to someone. Love that. Um, and then he would literally like have friends come in and take meetings, like therapy meetings in this coffee shop at the Barnes and Noble. And the guy, they would always leave. Like they had like some religious experience. Like, thank you so much for listening, man. I was like, this guy's a fucking genius. Like, I think I need to be his best friend. What is he doing? Wait, what is he I do, have though? no idea dude no idea he stopped going after the remodel and that's why i know the remodel has bad juju because he never came back okay, okay okay i, I want to ask met like a, a I, guru there like, i don't know <laughs> i don't know if he was running a cult i don't know but i think he was a genius oh, is there wow. any like weird co- okay okay because this just reminds me of like oh i worked at a sabaro's pizza when i was a kid and there was one dude that would come in every like week he would buy a soda Okay, this doesn't sound that crazy, but when I explain it, it really makes sense. He'd buy a soda. He'd put the soda in between his two hands like this. Okay, like he would do a star formation. And he would just sit there, sip the whole thing, put it in the trash. Very like, you know, methodical and then just walk out. He would do that once a week. I went to a different mall because I worked at a different mall and he did it there too. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, this guy is, there's something going that on. That was the one joy of his life was yeah. that yeah. soda. Like that, that was a, I need to calm down and I need to go through this soda and then I will not murder anyone today. That's what that was. Yeah. I'm, I'm t- it, it, it bothered- you helped uh, you helped somebody not commit murder. That's amazing. I think that's what it was. He was so pent up. He felt like one of those guys from like the 90s, like in the, you know, the tux, like the the people who are like, I hate my nine to five. I'm going to, what's a fight club? He felt like a fight club character. Did okay? feel like, okay. That's what it is. But have you ever seen anything weird at, at like when you were working retail besides that? Like, or not retail, when you were working at uh, Keen? Um, like any weird customers? I mean, it, not to not to dox the customers. Oh, I had someone who was definitely a pickup artist come in one time and try and like. What do, was he wearing? Do you remember? He was wearing a fedora. Was it Hitch? 
pick up artist? No, it was. Was it a Reddit pick up artist? No, it, it literally was like My one of those old school, like, latte. like, like, like jokey, pick, like if you picture like the old school 2000s, like pickup artists, that's what this guy was. He literally would talk like, yes, that sounds, that sounds lovely. Like, like, <laughs> like, like really trying to get me to like I want to fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fuck like, that guy. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I'm a nice person. I like tips. I smile at people to get nice tips, you know? And so one time, oh my God, there was this one time unrelated to the pickup artist. This woman comes in and like, first I'm like, hi, like, welcome on in. She's like, oh my God, like, thank you. Like I was having an awful day. Like just being super nice about me smiling at her and just saying like, hi, welcome on in. Cause it was a slow moment mm -hmm. and her boyfriend was in and um, we're talking and they're like, oh, what are we like looking at like the dessert case? And um, she was like, you know, you have really nice green eyes. I was like, oh, thank you. And he, and he said something. I don't even know what this was. She was like, what was that? And starts screaming at him for flirting with me and just starts losing it. They walk out. And I was like, my manager's like, I don't know. I don't know. Just do you want? Do you need a minute? Do you need to go in the back? Are you okay? Are you? Do you feel safe she right now? She was baiting. It was what she was doing. <laughs> it so was. Like, oh, I was like, this is so. I was like, I don't know what just happened. Th that happened also. Like, that happened a lot at the uh, the baby clothes store as well. Like, there, I I said bless you to someone once. Like someone's because it was like couples that would come in like, yeah. on occasion. Um, I said bless you to a man one time, and his wife was like, "Do not flirt with my husband." Oh I was my like, god! He sneezed. Like it was. It was very weird. It was very weird. So not only did you have that experience working retail, you had that at the beach in Florida recently, Miss Mistress. Which one? Which Going one? Going to Key West alone. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, for okay. Christmas. Long story short. Do we talk about? Yeah, we can. Go for it. Long story short. Want. Basically, um, in 2022, my dad's long-term girlfriend passed away on Christmas Eve of mm -hmm. cancer after we were taking care of her in a hospice. And so for this Christmas, which because of my parents, <laughs> you're getting a lot of lore because we call this sharing the worms on my podcast because I, I <laughs> drop traumatic lore the way that children show you the worms they keep in their pockets. Like, oh, surprise. Yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, um, I was still smiling <laughs> listening to you. I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fro <laughs> Frogan showed me some worms on our way to Ikea once and it fucked up my week. <laughs> <laughs> but basically no so my because of like when your parents divorce and you do the 50 50 like like a lot of holidays especially if you're not religious like just become very like clinical and right. not fun so like and now it's like i was like what am i gonna do like this is my first holiday without my stepmom essentially mm -hmm. and what am i gonna do just wait around for my extended family to remember that they have us in their lives and be like oh yeah come to christmas eve dinner or whatever and i was like i don't want to do that i'm an adult i make good money i'm gonna go fuck off to a resort in florida nice. so i went and did that alone and um <laughs> i don't know what i was expecting i had been warned to like oh hey it's probably gonna be like a lot of families and like a lot of kids like mm -hmm. just wanting to go to a resort and i was like okay I was not expecting for everyone to look at me like I was a homewrecker in training. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is, what is, <laughs> I, I think it was, I was literally, I think the only single female that was there, like alone. There you was do like, travel alone a lot. I travel alone a lot. What's yeah. that? Yeah. So you're the only one there in all of Florida. Raph's from Florida. Raph is, have you ever homewrecked? If there's any woman that's just there alone, it's a mistress. <laughs> 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 we don't take second thoughts. It's a mistress. Yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of nice. Cause I just, I, even when I travel now for work, like even I travel alone, I'm around so many people. Cause I just mm -hmm. review events. So it was actually really nice to just be like, oh cool. Like this literal family is picking up and moving. Cause I went and sat on a beach chair, like 15 feet away. I was like, this is kind of nice. <laughs> I'm, this is what being pariah for like? No, no, no. Welcome to, welcome I to don't me. even think I was that. I think it was just like, oh my God, she's a potential threat. Like, oh. like she's. All I can think about is Amanda finally gets it. What's like to be Arab? <laughs> I haven't even made the joke about how your first guest is a white woman. <laughs> yeah, we needed it. <laughs> hey, whites. <laughs> hey, crackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll give you the c-word pass. Thank you. <laughs> She's not fine. She has it. He has it. I don't even have it. Oh, he doesn't have it. <laughs> I need oh, it. Man. Yeah, but it was like I was just alone a lot, and then like the second to last day I was there, I'm like walking into the adults only pool, which no one was ever in, which was really nice because everyone's there with their kids, so they have to be in the ki the, the mm -hmm. kids access pool, which is great. Um, so it was me and a bunch of iguanas, which was fun. Um, because Florida's weird. They run rampant over there. It's so there was crazy. a there was a time there was a time period where. I think it was like mandated by Florida. Like, if you see iguanas, kill them. 
<laughs> they're, they're overtaking. They're not supposed oh. to be there. It right? was like it was like the emu like uh, crisis in. Uh, I know. Um, not boa constrictors. What's the big? Oh, Burmese pythons. They have mm-hmm. a bunch of them. I learned this fact from someone from Gatorland at the Florida Man Games that I was at yesterday. I fucking love you Gatorland. Went to Gatorland. No, um, he came and did an alligator show at. <laughs> I've never been. <laughs> I've lived in What's Florida. Gatorland? It's exactly what it sounds it's like. Not- well, I would guess that it's a squirrel location. Yeah, they have a I, 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 get, I get the concept of gators and, and an area of, but what is Dude, it fucking slaps all alligators. It's all alligators. <laughs> it's literally, it's the, I want to go to Gatorland. The yeah. attraction you drive by, it's just a Rob's podcast alligator. field trip to Florida to go to Gatorland. Oh, I, I to would Gatorland. do that all yeah. you, you know what you would like? You would love Dino World or Dino Land. Or I would whatever. love to go to Dino Land. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, do you get to fuck a dinosaur? I didn't say that. <laughs> did, you say, did you say that? What were you going to say? Yes. I said, I I was gonna say, do you get to fucking see a real dinosaur? But like, <laughs> but Froga looked at me and she's like, like jumped up. I'm like, would oh you God. be the bottom in that situation? Though? I would not be the bottom. If anything, I'd be a power bottom. Okay. <laughs> That's still a bottom, bestie. Yeah, it's power. Not it's only am I going to be a bottom, I'm going to be the power bottom. <laughs> I'm sorry, if a T Rex is going to fuck me, I'm not going to be the top in that situation. I'm, I'm going to. There's nothing I can I do. Such weird mental images of you climbing on top of like a dinosaur. I really oh, hope. I really like, hope for future guests, you send them this clip. Yeah. I will. So this is kind of what we, our show is about. <laughs> also, also, it's like Donkey and his fucking dragon bitch. Like he got her pregnant. First of all, she's not a bitch. Okay. She's a lovely. I'm going to be honest. You guys are making this jokes. I just saw the new AI Sora thing that came out recently. I'm gonna send you some fucked up dinosaur porn with you guys. Don't. Do we look like Vosh to you? Yeah. <laughs> the AI blocks porn. The AI blocks porn. Does it? Yeah. Tell that to the internet. But Don't does it block that shit in a day. Yeah. <laughs> does not block dinosaur. Then we're good. <laughs> it doesn't. Do- <laughs> yeah. Does it block dinosaur porn? Yes. <laughs> no, you know. Yeah. Anything. It, it like it's trained. You're. You can't get. It's just like chat. We can train it to. Yeah. Do yeah. Porn. We can train it to make dinosaur porn. Yeah. There we go. This is our mission. Anyways, this is your new swell yeah. entertainment. But like the <laughs> second to last day, I'm like going into the pool, and this girl and her parents are leaving, and she goes, "Amanda," <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck, I've gone this whole trip five days without being recognized," and her mom was like, "I was like, hi," and her mom thought we were friends, and I was just being like a bitch. So she was like, "Oh, hi," like like kind of oh, mocking ma- me. Oh, and it's like, oh, I know her from social media. And she was like, oh, social media. I was like, yeah, it's cool. Nice to meet you. And she's like, oh, the mom's still mocking me. Like, cool. Like, I was like, what the fuck do you want me to do? <laughs> so they left and like, we just kept walking. And I was just like, I heard them talking. And I was like, cool. So I can never come back to this resort. <laughs> Not that I would ever see them again. But I was just like, fuck. Well, that's always, that's always fun when um, I do get recognized. And it's like that time it was like, okay, at least it's like the end of the trip. Mm-hmm. The, um, I just went to New York because I had a billboard in Times Square for one night, which was very fun. Thank Period. You. Yeah. That's a yeah. big, that's a thank big you. achievement. It, that's, it's that's literally every because actors, actresses, and that dreams. was on our notes to ask you. So thank you for bringing <laughs> it up. <laughs> thank thank you bringing it up. <laughs> yeah, well, Carrot Financial is like a, a financial creator company. And mm-hmm. so one of the things they do for a lot of the, their card holders is like, oh yeah, hey, we have like this block of, would you like to like be on a billboard? And so I was like, yeah, but I have to be there for it. So I went and I went with my dad because uh, I was like, you're going to take video clips of me for me. And I still haven't posted that video because I'm great at my job. Um, but we the last night we were there, I'm like exhausted. I've just been snacking. We've been like sightseeing all day. And he was like, I really want to go like go sit down and have dinner with me. Like just go downstairs with me. And I was like already in a bad mood. I'm annoyed because they close in 30 minutes. My dad doesn't give a shit about that. And so he's like, we're just going to sit down. Like they're not going to kick us out. I was like, no, but I don't want to be in here after closing. Like I've, <laughs> I've worked in the service industry. I don't want to be this person. We sit down and the waitress is looking at me and I was like, fuck <laughs> and she's like are you famous <laughs> and i'm like no how do you respond to that i though? said no and she's like are you on like youtube or something and i'm like i'm on youtube i just don't think i'm famous and she's like oh my god i like i don't remember the name of your channel but like i i've seen your i've seen your face i've seen your videos and like one of the other just clocked me as well and so i was like one now we can't talk shit uh <laughs> me and my dad because he's also a content creator and then I'm like, fuck, I'm already in a bad mood. And I, I I, can't like just sit here and pout. Like I have to actually <laughs> eat something. I have to like be nice to my dad. I was like, damn it. <laughs> Which like, it, it's not their fault. Like that was, they were very nice. They were very polite. It wasn't like weird or anything. Fuck you guys. No, and they were very sweet. They were very sweet. It was just like, sometimes you just want to be miserable. And it's like, yeah. sometimes you just can't, you know? And so I'm like. Like, and also because I review events alone a lot, like it's getting to the point where I go with my friends, Anarchy and Chris a lot, and they're cosplay creators. And so the joke is, is that when we're at events together, like I'm their cosplay assistant because they're all done up and I'm in like a sweater and jeans because I'm working. 
And so like I'll like hold their phones or something while they're getting photos with people and someone's like swell. And it's like, <laughs> so <laughs> they're it. like, eventually we're going to have to get you to start cosplaying at these events because you won't be able to walk the floor otherwise. And so I kind of want to make us, you know, have you seen the, like the waifu uh, guardians? Have you seen those cosplays? No. Where someone gets full tactical gear and then they cover it in like waifu anime titty stickers. Oh, no. I love that, though. That's yeah, awesome. I kind of want to make one of those. You should. Yes. And like that's my my disguise at events. Because like I have the Spider-Man suit, but enough people know about that for my content. Because Are they like looking out for it just in case? Yeah, I think they would be like, especially now that they know like I travel with these friends and things like that. Sometimes they'd be like, oh, if I see them, like Amanda's here somewhere type of thing. Mm -hmm. So. I have to like cosplay and then surprise. This is the cosplay I was at all weekend, you know, that type of thing. So, but sometimes it, it helps to be recognized at these events because vendors are like, oh my God, let me tell you exactly what happened at setup and like all yeah. this mess, which is like just information that I can't fully ask about sometimes. Right, right, so right. So that's kind of nice. So, yeah. It does give you that in, right? So you're basically like, oh, hi, you know, yeah. now give me all the details. Yeah. Well, I'm also at this weird point um, where a lot of my friends are or annoyed with me about it. I hate asking for things like just cause I think cause I'm out in LA, it's like very much like what can you do for me city? So like, I'm very conscious of not being like that. Yeah. Um, but I'm also at a size where it's like when you're making the list of like who to invite, I'm not on that list. Yeah. But then if you see me, you're like, Oh my God, I love your stuff. Like you can stay like, come here, come do this or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, my friends are like, Amanda, we literally could have gotten it for free. If you had just said you wanted to, if you just reached out and like said that you wanted to go. And I was like, well, one, if I do that, then I can't fully be honest because then they're going to expect that I'm going to be nice. Yeah. Yeah. But then also it's like I get it because there's some things that I really want to go to. But then people are like, well, we didn't know you wanted to come. So we didn't invite you. It's mm. like it's a little things like that. Also, a bunch of my friends are like, why the fuck are you still stringing me on a Mac? Sorry if I'm swearing a lot. I don't know. How no, much no, you it's fine. No, 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 okay. no. We are very, you know, we're very <laughs> hot on a Mac here. is fine, by no, the way. Streaming on a no, Mac is not, not fine. Not. It's, I it's, started it's on a Mac. I, I heard that and I was going to put a pin in it. That's fucking weird. I I made a partner fine. on a Mac. Yeah, you yeah, would, yeah. I, I, you made it on a Mac, but like it would have been sick on a PC. How many monitors do you have? One. <laughs> yeah, the Mac. I tried. I tried gaming. Um, I played Little Guardsman. Um, my chat loved it. Um, but the thing is, is that I had to have it a chat open on my phone because I only have one monitor. So I OBS wouldn't have chat open on my computer while I had Little Guardian open. So I had to um, have chat open on my phone. It was you, fine. Can I come over and help you set up? Scootish keeps asking too. I just have to have my dog secured because he's not like uh, Miles. He will like rip your arm off. I'll let oh, him bite fun. me. Fuck Scootish. Let me do it. <laughs> yeah, she's just it. to Miles attacking her. So yeah, fine. he literally, I'll walk past Miles. This motherfucker will grab my sleeve. You know what? He almost killed you last week. So don't he disrespect did. him. He had a gun in I'm his allergic fur. to dogs. Oh, oh that's um, true. Yeah, I forgot about that. And. I forgot my inhaler and like Capri made me watch him for 30 minutes while I took the fattest shit probably in the world. That's not true. He was like, I'll be back. <laughs> for the record. I, he was like, I'll be true, back. I think true. this is gaslighting the podcast, by the way. Mm -hmm. No, listen, like, so uh, Raph and Scootish had to go to Scootish's house to pick up a camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, what, 10 minutes away? Something like that, yeah. 10 minutes away. Capri was in the bathroom the entire time they were gone. I didn't poop for three days. And I had to wrinkle miles. That's not a likely healthy. story. I, 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 okay, it is healthy. Apparently, I googled it. It says you can poop anywhere between one and three days. And frogan at you the same should be pooping more than that, though. Yeah, I want to poop. It was just a Your week. Your old I was man is showing. Yeah, yeah. Frogan didn't shit for three days either at the same time. I, I talked to my doctor. What do you say? He said that when you lose weight, you get hungry, and I need to eat more fiber and protein. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel better, um, my assistant made a list of companies because uh, Hassan specifically, who is demanding to come on this podcast, by the way, and he's, he's very never upset. Come on. You're not coming on. <laughs> he's very upset. I'm here first. Um, he is demanding that I ask for a PC because companies sent him one. And he's like, you're way bigger than me. I don't know why you're not asking for PCs. So my assistant is. Okay, good. Reaching out to cold calling. If you get okay, multiple, cool. give me one, please. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm streaming on a laptop right now, too. Yeah, yeah. Scootish said it would be really funny. Well, no, Hassan specifically said for the meme, it would be funny if I got sent like four different pieces. Dude, it would be hilarious. Get a cute one. I really want a cute one. I really want something cute. Yeah. Pink. Pink, girly pop. Girly pop. Well, Shit. I have a lot of purple, get purple one. and green. Ask oh. them to make it Hermes custom or F1 custom. See, okay, because I really want to have, like, my friend is getting an animated loading screen done. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, I can't give you my artist name because they're taking 9,000 years. And I don't want them to be busier. Yeah. But I really want one where it's, like, me with, like, an F1 car and I'm, like, kicking the tire like the stream is starting. Yeah. Like, that I think that'd be so really good. fun. Dude, okay, I'll, I'll ask her on for anime, like, yeah. other streamer animators that I've mm -hmm. found. 
I like Pokey okay. has a really good one because I was just sending you shit of like I said artist I didn't read the form. That's okay. Guilty. It's okay. The form locked up and people were like, uh, the form you shared is closed. I was like, no, we meet we met the max application Damn. for it. So I'm very Jeez. thankful my assistant is like, I got it. I'm like, oh thank God. <laughs> Period. I, ever since I started streaming, I've been dropping the ball on a lot of stuff. I think I'm just realizing that like I'm one person. You know, like there's yeah. a lot I can mm -hmm. do, but also it's like the the emotional draining that I think comes with streaming. I'm just dropping the ball on like really stupid things that I used to be really good at. People are talking about that on the internet right now. It's a big contentious thing with Hassan saying it's emotionally draining. I and we're gonna talk about that on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I have thoughts yeah. on that too, because like for me as well, it's like I. I've worked as a barista, I've worked retail, like I've never had a nine to five, but like this is definitely the preferred job. Like I could, if I wanted to job. tomorrow, if I wanted to go to Paris, I could do that. I no. could make that happen. It, it's, I could not do that when I worked at the coffee that's shop. That's amazing. It's the preferred job. Um, actually, now can I wrap up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go ahead. All right, I'll wrap up. No, okay. Um, Thank this you so much. Uh, please, guys, everyone go follow Amanda. <laughs> we'll put all of her links down below. Uh, this concludes the uh, the free episode. The rest of it's going to be behind the paywall on the Patreon. Uh, we're going to talk about the, you know, we're going to talk about the Hassan thing. We're going to talk about the uh, oh. Amanda's PC setup. Probably the dog will come in. I don't know. Uh, please uh, follow Raf. Uh, his socials are below. Frogan's socials are below. And Capri and Bobby's socials are below. But thank you guys so much. And uh, look at this preview of what's going to be on the Patreon that you're missing out Before on. Before we fade out, can I just say it's so nice to have a girly on the pod? Yay! Hey, you honest, thank God. I love actually, it. actually, I love before, we, before we, before we, yeah, is there anything it. you want to plug? Yeah. Or anything that you're planning on doing or something you're uh, excited about? Check me out on Twitch. I'm trying to hit 10K followers this year. Okay. I'm at like 5,000 something. Yes. It's going to happen. Um, also, if I hit 600,000 subs on YouTube, I'm going to waifu route my car. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, help me get to 600,000 subs. Yes. That's I'm at uh, 440,000 right now. <laughs> All right. We'll see you wait. on the Patreon. Bye. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Thank you guys. Amanda. Thank you. Amanda, 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 Amanda show. Amanda show. We got Amanda a gift for being uh, the first Arab on the Arabs podcast. We made Amanda. <laughs> 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 <laughs>